Uh, we're going to talk about uh, push rod adjustment and before we do that uh, I want to talk a little bit about the I guess some of the anatomy of the lifter or give people a visual on what you're actually doing when you adjust a push rod. So what we have here is a, a stock twin cam lifter. Um, it's been cut away so that you can kind of see the internals. Um, basically you have uh, a spring, uh, a one-way valve up here in this, this piston body and then you have uh, the cup for the push rod to fit into in the top and a retaining pin. Okay, and so uh, what you're doing when you're adjusting the push rod is the gap between the piston and the bottom of the lifter, uh, you're, you're closing that gap. And so for the lifter to do its job and adjust uh, or compensate for the growth in engine height and as things warm up and change distances, the hydraulic lifter, of course, this travel has to change and, and take all the valve lash so that your valve train is quiet. Um, so what you're trying to do is to give this the maximum adjustment, you want to adjust this piston so that it's in the center of that travel in between this distance here. Well, if you measure this with the calipers, it's roughly 200 thousandths of an inch. And so what we want to do is, is adjust this down about 100 thousandths of an inch. So uh, an SNS push rod has 32 thousandths or 32 threads per inch. So one revolution gives you 32 thousandths of length in the push rod. So as we try to achieve 100 thousandths, um, we would want to go one turn at 32 thousandths, two turns at 64, three turns at uh, uh, 96, and then just over three turns is going to give you that 100 thousandths. So what we generally refer to uh, for adjustment on a push rod is uh, of flats. Um, anytime you're talking in terms of flats, you're, you're essentially referring to a six-sided hexagonal shape. And so you stick a wrench on a set of flats because a wrench is basically shaped like this. And so you turn it once, pull the wrench off, and turn it to the next flat on that hex. And so we, when we turn it 20 flats, we would do that 20 times, okay? or um, sometimes they refer to that as uh, two and a half turns or three and a half turns, that kind of thing. Um, so it can be termed both ways, either flats or in, in the number of turns. So um, another topic that we should cover would be the limited travel spacers. Um, SNS has a product called the LT Kit. It's a limited travel washer. What this washer does is uh, basically turns your hydraulic lifter into a solid lifter. Um, you could take a set of hydraulic lifters out of an engine and generally speaking putting it, a set of hydro or solids in their place would of course not give like a hydraulic lifter will. And so the, the advantage there is that you, you don't have the collapsing of the lifter uh, under high RPM. And so the LT kit of course is going to maintain uh, valve control and and uh, not collapse the lifter at high RPM so that we get the benefit of uh, improved timing. So generally speaking, if, if you were to put a, high, a solid lifter in place of a hydraulic, you would you would certainly achieve more horsepower and that is the whole idea behind the LT kit. So what effectively happens when you put this in this lifter is that 200 thousandths I was talking about becomes uh, roughly 100 thousandths. And so when we adjust uh, this lifter down to that washer, we've, we've now raised the floor up and taken away some of this travel. There's still, of course, oil inside of this LT kit. So there's a reservoir of oil there that, that can, of, of course, work its way through the one-way valve and pump up the lifter. But uh, we bring the, the plunger down or the piston down so that it is essentially just above that limited travel spacer or washer. Um, and then uh, we, we will bring it down so it touches, and then we back it off one full turn, so six flats. Um, and I'll go through that procedure here actually on a bike so that uh, we can understand better how to do it in the real environment. So with the limited travel spacer uh, installed, you have the benefit of a, a solid lifter with the quiet uh, performance of a hydraulic lifter. We're gonna talk about uh, uh, adjustable push rods here. SNS has two versions of adjustable push rods. Uh, we have the standard push rod here, which is uh, 
the cheaper of our push rods. It, uh, in a twin cam, it installs without removing the rocker boxes. Basically, it would have to go up and in and you need to remove the tappet cover. Okay, so not too inconvenient. Uh, very feasible, at least you don't have to remove the rocker box. We also have the quickie push rod and if you can see how the quickie push rod collapses much farther than the standard push rod. And the advantage of that is, of course, that you can install it without removing the tappet cover. Okay, the standard push rod also uh, on an evolution engine you would have to remove the rocker boxes to use the standard push rod. So uh, if, a, if a guy switches to the quickie you certainly uh, have a little bit more expensive push rod but you, you certainly will save the money and labor uh, without the added expense of, of removing the rocker boxes and of course the tappet cover on a twin cam. The s and uh, push rod kit comes as you see it here and it has these uh, uh, tubes and of course the, the clips. The tubes that come with it are necessary because the stock tube is substantially longer and of course since it's longer you can't push it up far enough on the motor to be able to get at the adjuster underneath here. And I'll kind of show you right here if that tube, if the stock tube was in this scenario you would cover up the adjuster and you wouldn't be able to get at it. Okay, so when you buy a set of s and push rods they they come with a set of tubes so that uh, you can basically install them without taking anything else apart. All right, we're going to go through the procedure to adjust push rods, install and adjust. Um, I've already got one push rod in here, uh, kind of for a visual purpose, but uh, first thing you do uh, before you install a push rod or, or start adjusting them is to make sure that you have the cam or the cylinder that you're going to install the push rods into on the base circle. Um, and how we do that is basically we, we raise the vehicle with the proper jack, uh, pull the spark plugs, and put the uh, transmission in high gear. Okay, so to find the proper location of the base circle on, the, on say, the rear cam we're going to set up for, I'm going to watch for overlap on the front cam. Okay, so I want to know when both of these lifters are moving. I'm just going to spin the rear wheel. and. The outer lifter is of course the exhaust, the inner is the intake, and right now I have them both moving, okay? And of course I could see that this one was not moving at the same time. So I have the front, uh, front cam on overlap, the rear cam is on the base circle. Now this particular engine has a set of s, &S Easy Start cams. And what that means is on the exhaust uh, lobe we have the compression release trigger, okay? So if you were to put the cam on the base circle and, and actually stop on that trigger, your valve or push rod would be opened 20, 25 thousandths, okay? And that would give you an erroneous uh, adjustment. So what you need to look for on the exhaust push rod is that you're not on the top of that trigger. And what we'll do now is we'll put in the exhaust push rod and I'll show you that we're not on that trigger or we'll look for that to move. 